Here, I spoke with a doctor at a nonprofit behavioral health provider yesterday, and they were so overwhelmed, they told me they were just trying to keep their head above water. That's not the case everywhere, but as we face more mental health challenges, there are more demands, but less money. Um, if you um, just feel like you can't go on, like the weight of the world is on your shoulders and, and you don't know where to turn. Safe havens, a soft place to fall, an ear to listen, maybe even a place to work. If you want to be an essential uh, you know, a worker at this time, you can come to work for us. But many healthcare nonprofits in West Virginia are now the ones who need some help. But in the behavioral health realm, it just seems that we're kind of at the, we're always on the margins of what we're able to, to, to bill and the revenue that we're able to generate. They're facing funding problems amid canceled fundraisers and unpredictable state budgets. As we get sort of lost in the shuffle, we don't get federal funding. Nonprofits are included in the CARES Act, but that may be just enough for now. You don't have a whole lot of stockpile and not a whole lot of cash on hand to continue without any revenue coming in. It Advocates like Mark have been working in Charleston to lobby for health care nonprofits in our backyard. So right now we're kind of in a wait and see. We're trying to influence that. We meet uh, weekly with the National Council for Behavioral Health in Washington. In the meantime, the call for help is also coming from close to home. Consider in the next round of funding, carving out something specifically for the nonprofit free clinics. The burden for these nonprofits made even heavier. When will I get to go back to work? Will I have enough to, you know, to keep the lights on or feed my family? As an already vulnerable population needs help now more than ever.